The movie begins with the arrest and torture of Yi Sun Sin after being accused by a Japanese double agent. However, after the Japanese successfully conquered two crucial points in the country, including Chilkyaliang, King Shonjo pardoned Yi and restored his position as an admiral in the navy. Yi gathers 12 warships and camps near the Southern Sea, 20 kilometers from the Japanese's base. During a meeting to discuss the future battle, General Bei Sol, a survivor at Chilkyaliang, reminds Yi that the king orders the disbandment of Yi's fleet. While Yi remains distant and aloof in his replies, Bei becomes more irritated at his deliberate decision to neglect the king's order. Tension begins forming among the soldiers as Bei challenges Yi's capabilities and leadership. However, Yi ends the meeting before they conclude. Meanwhile, in the Japanese base, Commander Toto Takadora and General Wakazaka Yasuharu discuss a mysterious person that their chancellor has prepared to assist them in battle. They, later on, meet this mystery figure, whose name is Kurushima Mishifusa, as well as his pirate-like soldiers, on land during one of their attacks. Back in the Korean base, Yi reads a letter from the king to disband his fleet. His pondering thoughts are disturbed when he starts coughing up blood. Later in the day, he gets informed about the Japanese's fast progress in invading the country. Agreeing with his men that they should start deciding on a move, he asks one of them, Im Jun Young, to send a message to Jinza, a secret spy in the Japanese Navy. When Im leaves for the task, Yi marvels at the finalization of the figurehead for his turtle ship. Yi proudly looks at the massive warship he built, nearly close to completion. As Im readies a boat to travel to the Japanese base, a woman hands him a talisman for good luck. He thanks her and goes off. Inside Korea, one of Yi's men goes to the general and asks for reinforcements. When the general declines, the soldier begs him to reconsider, explaining their situation in the Southern Sea. Irritated, the general orders him to be taken away and locked up. At the same time, in the Japanese base, a meeting is held to discuss their strategy for battle. It is shortly interrupted when Kurushima steps in to lay out his plan for resupplying troops and reaching the capital through a strait. Wakizaka, stunned at Kurushima's audacity in taking control of the meeting, draws his sword but is cut short by one of the men in the discussion. After a moment of tension, Kurushima reassures Commander Toto that he will kill Admiral Yi. Meanwhile, in Yi's house, his son, Yi Vu, suggests that he should use his failing health as an excuse to step down from his position and disband his fleet. Yi calmly declines, explaining that loyalty to the king as his duty must come first. Filled with resentment towards the king for almost killing his father during his time behind bars, Vu tells him it's a hopeless battle. Quietly, Yi dismisses the topic. The following day, a mysterious boat covered in rags arrives at Yi's base. Attached to the sail is Captain Bei Hong Suk's head, with a warning of decapitation from the Japanese. The soldiers get struck with more fear as they uncover the rags to reveal piles of leaders inside the boat. Later in the day, Wakizaka confronts Kurushima about the prisoners he beheaded and sent to the Koreans. Kurushima calmly tells him it would make up for a more exciting fight. Wakizaka starts warning him about Yi's grit and power in battle. At this, Kurushima mocks Wakizaka's fear of Yi. With his pride hurt, Wakizaka draws his weapon and starts a sword fight. It quickly ends as Kurushima rushes his blade against Wakizaka's throat, reminding him that he can end Yi. Later, during a meal with a man named Haru, Kurushima talks about his beloved brother's death during the Joseon district's conquest. He explains that Yi's death, along with the conquering of Joseon, is necessary to avenge his brother. Early the following day, in Yi's base, a soldier is caught fleeing from his position. In front of all the other soldiers, he tells Yi that he lost hope when his comrades died in Chilkyaliang. He questions the futility of the incoming battle and rhetorically asks if his death should be in vain. With one swift motion, Yi quickly beheads him. A curtain of dread and shock falls over the wide-eyed soldiers as the admiral reminds them that they must remain firm and disciplined. After the gruesome display, the admiral, accompanied by General Bei and another man, goes out to see a narrow and treacherous passage in a strait nearby. They assume the Japanese will use it to invade the Southern Sea. The man points out that the most dangerous feature of the channel is the large whirlpool that forms from time to time and the eerie howl-like sound that the waves produce whenever the vortex appears. With a look of dread, he explains further that the sound can barely be heard during high tide, making the whirlpool somewhat hidden and more dangerous. Later, Yi shares with his son that he interprets the howl-like sounds of the waves to be the men who died in Chilkyaliang. Concerned, Vu asks him if the turtle ship is his only strategy. Yi clarifies that the real problem lies with his men's hopelessness in the incoming fight. He explains that the strict decapitation he showed earlier was necessary to instill fear in his men, which he hopes can turn into courage later on. Later in the night, Yi wakes up to three ghostly figures at his door. He becomes speechless when he recognizes the apparitions the men he's lost in battle. 
Caught up in guilt and sadness, Yi calls for them to come in, but they walk away. As he tries to go after them, Vu comes down just in time to warn his father about the hooded figures rushing towards him from behind. Yi gets stabbed in the shoulder but quickly fights back. Joining in the fight, Vu gets injured in the shoulder. When Yi pushes one of the figures against the wall, the room's doors open, revealing the turtle ship in the distance lit on fire. Caught in disbelief, Yi runs out to it, leaving his son. Luckily, a few men come to his rescue and unveil the hooded figures to reveal General Bei's men. Shocked and disgusted at the betrayal, the soldiers find General Bei on a boat on the distant shores. As Bei yells for the soldiers not to waste their lives on the incoming useless battle, one of the soldiers releases an arrow, killing Bei. Yi stares in horror back in camp as the fire destroys his beloved ship. His men stopped him before he could run into the fire. He cries in agony, seeing his only battle strategy going to ash. Eventually, news of Yi's tragic loss reaches Commander Toto. On that day, in the forest, Im Jun Young has trouble finding Jinza. He then gets caught saving a man getting chased by Japanese soldiers. He flees and hides among a group of prisoners on a nearby road as more Japanese soldiers search the forest. At the same time, a Japanese soldier riding a horse passes by him. Im recognizes the man Jinza. Back in the forest, the hunted man gets caught by the soldiers. Frantic, he begs for his life but to no avail. Before the soldiers can strike him, he gets saved by a man named Su Bong and Jinza, who finds him and calms him down. Later that day, Yi receives a letter from Jinza. He gets informed about Kurushima and the Japanese's battle plans and routes. Without a turtle ship, Yi orders his men to prepare for battle at Yuzhong. Yi writes the king a letter after a day of preparing his plan to charge into battle despite being outnumbered. However, he gets interrupted when a group of his soldiers comes to him. Led by Captain On Wai, they kneel in respect as they tell him that they believe the incoming battle is futile without the turtle ship. Yi acknowledges his men's words and tells them to gather the rest of the soldiers. Yi orders all his men who gathered before the base to burn the barracks. As the men turn frantic towards the growing fires, the admiral calls their attention, reminding them that death is inevitable. He calls them to stand firm and fight to their last breath. Soon after that, Yi gets introduced to Su Bong, who he realizes is General Bei's son. Su Bong asks Yi if he could be part of his fleet. The admiral accepts his request, assigning him to be one of the rowers. The admiral boards his ship the following day, meeting with Jinza on the top deck as they make their way toward the sea. Hundreds of Japanese fleets appear in the distance as they hold their battle positions. When Yi sees the first vanguard of ships moving towards them, he commands his men to turn the boat and ready the cannons and archers. As the vanguard ships release gunpowder, Yi's men shoot the guns, damaging some of the vanguard ships. Archers follow, eliminating most of the Japanese soldiers. Kurashima then orders the second vanguard to advance. Seeing that the current has changed to a disadvantage, Yi's ship heads toward Blood Isle. As his men try to keep the boat from hitting the nearby rocks, one of the soldiers tells him that they should alert their other ships. Yi ignores his suggestion and tells his men to switch to shrapnel shells and to get ready for close combat. When one of the enemy ships gets close, it fastens hooked ropes and planks to Yi's ship. Just as the Japanese soldiers are about to invade, Yi orders the cannons to release fire, quickly crushing the enemy ship. A series of arrows wipe out the surviving Japanese soldiers. As the next vanguard ship arrives, the Japanese successfully board Yi's boat. While Yi's men are slowly getting overpowered, more enemy ships surround them. Caught in the middle of the slaughter, one of Yi's men becomes hysterical and sets a barrel of gunpowder on fire, causing an explosion on the ship. Disoriented from the blow, one of Yi's men supported him. He quickly joins the fight while ordering the cannons to be put in place of the oars in a group. Despite the danger it would pose, his men obey. When the guns are loaded and in business, Yi orders to release fire, causing the cannons to super blast through the surrounding vanguard ships. After a moment of stillness in the wreckage, Yi's ship emerges. His soldiers, and even the spectating civilians, are lit up with hope and courage. Suddenly, a whirlpool begins forming in the middle of the sea, causing the waters near Yi's ship to calm. At this, Kurashima orders his main fleet to advance. Seeing this, Yi tells his men to raise their flag to signal the other ships from his fleet. A bullet suddenly hits him when one of his men tries to raise it. The admiral notices a masked figure in Kurashima's ship holding a gun. Without delay, he prepares a cannon and waits for the right moment. Then, when another soldier tries to raise their flag, he shoots the sea, the splash of water causing the shooter to miss. As Yi tends to the wounded soldier, another masked shooter aims for Yi. However, before he can pull the trigger, he gets shot in the eye with an arrow by on. Then, Yi tells his men to ride to the straight center. At the same time, 
he notices a fast approaching enemy boat filled with straw. Confused, he orders his archers to shoot flaming arrows toward it. Below deck, his men discover that they don't have any more shells, only a torpedo. As it impales the straw-filled ship, broken chains of the imprisoned rowers below deck. Im Jun Young, one of the prisoners, notices stacks of gunpowder inside the vessel and dumps one of the barrels into the sea. Jinza sees Lim and immediately informs Yi about the hidden threat. As Lim tries to steer the boat away from its course, he sees the woman who gave him the talisman in the distance. Before he can react, a Japanese soldier stabs him from behind. Writing in pain, Lim stays in place, but before the enemy can strike him, arrows shoot straight into the soldier, killing him. Unable to move, Lim yells for the woman to alert the other ships to shoot at the straw-filled boat to stop it from reaching Yi. Despite the hesitation, she removes a piece of her dress and waves it while yelling. The other civilians see her and do the same. Captain On sees the signal and prepares his cannons. Before the straw-filled boat could go nearer Yi's ship, On releases fire, causing bits of damage to the flagship as the boat explodes with him on board. As the whirlpool enlarges, Kurushima's ship picks up speed, aiming toward Yi's flagship. As Yi's soldiers brace themselves, Kurushima's ship rams right into them, causing both ships to spin around the whirlpool. As the two vessels hurtle at each other, the soldiers exchange arrows and gunpowder, causing a bloody mess on both sides. Ships caught side to side, the Japanese wasted no time boarding the boat. Fueled by courage, Yi's men fight vigorously, killing many men. Kurushima's ship starts to receive blow after blow from the cannons of Yi's other boats in the distance. Kurushima's men are out of control when he orders a counterattack. When one of his men, Kurama, suggests reinforcements, Kurushima tells him they have none. Instead, he rushes through Yi's boat, furiously killing off soldiers until Jinza stabs him, followed by arrows. Despite his numerous injuries, Kurushima runs straight toward Yi with his blade, only to be cut down by Yi's swift beheading. As Yi's ship continues to toss around in the whirlpool, he sees Wakazaka's fleet approaching. For a moment, all feels lost as his boat is trapped. Suddenly, a bunch of hooked ropes latches onto the ship's rails. Yi looks out to see civilians in boats working together to hoist their ships away from the watery vortex. In the distance, the rest of Yi's fleet begins riding the waves to assist them. As the current changes, Wakazaka becomes frantic, telling his men to speed up before Yi's ships can get into formation. Fortunately, Yi's ship manages to get rescued quickly and charges forward. With the current in their favor, Yi's ships barge straight into the enemy vessels, breaking Wakazaka's front lines. Then, Yi's ships release fire, crushing many of the enemy's ships as they continue moving forward. Hopeless and short-numbered, the enemy retreats. As Yi's ship turns around to return home, the soldiers and spectating civilians celebrate their victory. When they return to land, Vu asks Yi how the whirlpool formed with such impeccable timing. Yi tells him that it was nothing short of a miracle. Vu thinks about the truth in his father's words as they make their way to their new base. The movie ends with an opening to another one of their fights with the Japanese, using a new, large turtle ship to sail straight into battle. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this to help the channel out. Have a nice day.